It's only been a few months since I've moved away from Randwick, but things are so much better here. I'm already getting better sleep, there's less traffic, and I can walk and cycle around without having to worry about being run over by some aggressive driver. This was the best decision of my life. I'm never looking back. <laughs> I wait at this traffic light, I'd like to take the opportunity to give a big thank you to the people who support me on Kofi. So thank you, Arx, Abiram, Michael, Trisha, Sharath, Tarkon, Joe, Ben, Adam, Lucas, and Stuart. And welcome to Uwu Transport for New South Wales Abolish Minimum Parking Rates. <laughs> Okay. Guys, wake up! New active transport strategy just dropped. Ugh. I thought I told you I didn't want to see you again. I thought you moved to Bathurst. Yeah, your, your name's not even on the lease anymore. Get out of here. But did you know that a third of people in Randwick City can't drive? Hmm, go on. Welcome to Footpaths and Corner Stores. My real full name is Chris Topher. Make sure to subscribe for a new active transport strategy every week. Now, the active transport strategy has six outcomes. Number one, that walking and cycling feels safe and comfortable for all ages and abilities. Number two, that walking and cycling are fun and encouraged. Number three, to enable walkable neighborhoods, 15 minute cities. Number four, that there is sufficient space and time for people to walk. Number five, that neighborhoods are connected by safe cycling infrastructure. And number six, that walking and cycling are the first choice for travel to school. These sound good, but maybe a bit squishy and kind of hard to measure. See, that's what I thought as well. And then I found this guy. He's literally me, for real. Look. And that's easier to measure how? Yeah, no, 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 I just, I just thought that was cool. This is, the, um, this is the, the measurable stuff. So this is a list of goals that they're aiming to complete by 2031. Goal number one, we aim to elevate the proportion of all journeys made via walking and cycling from the current 26%, not a bad start to be honest, to an ambitious 35%. This will help our communities to live healthy, happier and more active lives. One of the things that makes City of Sydney one of the best cycling councils in New South Wales is the fact that they set tangible goals just like this. Not a lot of other active transport plans actually have good hard numbers in there. Um, City of Sydney sets a goal of 10% of trips to work to be done by bike. Now this is better in one sense because it separates walking and cycling so we get a better sense of like how many people are cycling, how many people are walking, we can be more targeted in that sense. But in another way, this aim of 35% of all trips to be done by active transport that Randwick has is better than City of Sydney's because it includes non-work trips. And the non-work trips are where cycling infrastructure can make the biggest difference. You can drop your kid off at school, go to the groceries, you know, you can trip chain in a way that can't really be done on public transport as well. So it's good that they're focusing on all trips here. Goal number two, in tandem with promoting active transport, their objective is to reduce their reliance on private vehicles targeting a reduction to 45% of all trips in the LGA being made by cars. This will help reduce the carbon footprint and assist in addressing traffic congestion. This is an awesome goal, I have no notes. The next goal is goal number three, recognizing the importance of safe bike routes for our residents, visitors and workers. They're committed to delivering an additional 30 kilometers of secure bike pathways. See, this will not only encourage more residents to take up bike riding, but crucially for me, it will also help to improve their safety. Do they have a map of the cycling network they want to build? They sure do. Right here. Yeah, but how much of the network would they actually build if they did 30 kilometers by 2030? So if we presume that they're going to build it in numbered order, which they won't, but just to make things easy for us, we'll assume that. Um, 30 kilometers would include C1, C2, C3, 
C4 and half of C5 if we don't count the stuff they've already built along the C1 route. Some more goals that they have, which I think are really good, is that they want to increase the proportion of children who walk, scoot or ride bikes to school by 30%. And they want to reduce casualties on the road network by 50% from a 2018 baseline of 269 incidents. And they want to do this by 2031. So it's really good to see cycling infrastructure and active transport infrastructure being clearly linked to lowering road deaths and lowering car use. Okay, and how exactly are they going to do this? Glad you asked. Here are a few strategies that they list. They're going to support the introduction of safer traffic speeds. Now this is a little vague, but I think that's because Transport for New South Wales has control over the speed limit, so they can't really promise anything. Ideally though, this means they're aiming to get residential and high streets down to 30 k's an hour and arterials down to 50 k's an hour. They're also going to ensure road space is allocated to support safe and comfortable walking and bike riding. Awesome! That's so much better than, you know, creating controversy by chopping down trees, which is a lot of what they did with the light rail instead of taking away space from cars. They're also going to deliver a connected cycling network between local neighbourhoods and strategic centres, which you can see clearly outlined on the map. They're going to provide an additional 30 kilometres of safe cycling routes by 2031, as I mentioned. They're going to connect a cohesive cycle network with adjoining councils, which is fantastic because Randwick Council shares a border with City of Sydney, which has the best cycling network in the state. And they're going to use trials and innovative methods to deliver the future cycling network. What this says to me is that they're probably going to do things like pop up cycleways to get it all built really quick and then build it permanently when they repave the road so that they have extra time to really finesse the design, asking locals how it works. Now, as great as this strategy is, there are some points that they could improve on. For example, what City of Sydney does really well in their cycling strategy is that they have interim goals to keep themselves accountable. Adding these would do the same thing for Randwick Council. The nod towards reallocating space for pedestrians is really good, but I think it could be more specific and measurable. For example, a goal to convert a certain amount of road space, you know, a certain amount of kilometres squared to pedestrian space could really help keep council accountable. Specific projects for this could also be mentioned. Parts of Coogee Bay Road and most of Belmore Road could really do with being pedestrianised as much as possible. For example, being made bus, bike and taxi only and having the street parking turned into wider footpaths. The reallocation of space goal could also include things like curb build outs, continuous footpaths, that kind of thing. That would be great. Every day when I, Pedro Pedestrian, that's my real name, walk to the light rail, I pray every time I cross a side street that I am not gonna be run over by some speeding driver. We need traffic coming for sure. Agreed. Another thing that they could improve on is that they haven't outlined the full range of tools they have at their disposal for building a cycling network. What New South Wales calls a quiet way, the Dutch call a Fietstraat, and the English call a street in a low traffic neighbourhood is an important tool that's missing here. Not every street needs a cycleway. They're mostly useful for higher traffic, higher speed roads. Local streets that are 30 kilometres an hour or less should use modal filters such as parklets, like what City of Sydney does a lot in Redfern and Waterloo, to lower traffic on streets that can be used as safe cycling routes. An example of where Randwick Council went with a cycleway when they probably should have gone with a quiet way is Doncaster Avenue. They squeezed a poorly built cycleway into a local street with a school while still trying to keep two lanes of parking and car traffic and while maintaining the street status as a popular rat run to dodge the traffic lights on Anzac Parade. Modal filters to allow people to access racecourse parking on one end and a school drop-off area at another while preventing rat running could have been a better option. These are the kinds of things that Randwick Council should be considering. Wait, does the plan mention the timing of traffic lights and adding more where there aren't any yet? Having to wait at four different lights to get to the other side of Anzac Parade is just so painful. Yeah, and each light takes like a minute to go green for pedestrians. Yep, that's another thing that they don't mention, but really should. Okay, well this is all well and good, but where would we go if we want to check out the plan and, you know, maybe comment on it? I'm glad you asked. Randwick Council is consulting on the plan until the 17th of April. So go and click the link in the pinned comment and have your say now. Pinned comment? 
Oh yeah, yeah, this is a YouTube video. You You've invited me here for the cloud? Like and subscribe. Everything you've ever said about Randwick, I didn't trust him. Yeah, I was really surprised. That was part of the reason I felt so excited. And he came all the way here. Were you planning to come here this weekend? No. He just came just for this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>